Good morning, NTC. I am Reverend Krista Erickson, and I am honored to be speaking today on Mother's Day. And I am just, um, you know, I really want everyone to know that I am speaking to all, not just to mothers, because as we're going to find out, the great mother is a part of all of us. And um, in fact, that is the title of today's talk, The Great Mother. And I got that off of a book by Eric Newman, who is a student and turned lifelong friend of Carl Jung. And he wrote his book, The Great Mother. And it was kind of this compilation of um, anthropological and philosophical embodiment of the mother deity throughout archaeological history, up through even modern times. Um, I don't recommend the book. <laughs> it's actually, I personally got a lot of insight out of it, but it's it's dense. It's a really dense book. It's a very technical book. Um, but ultimately, the message behind the book is that throughout history, from you know, medieval times to ancient times, going as far back as art exists, um, because art is the oldest form of communication that we have as, you know, humans. Um, the mother figure has always been shown in such a wide variety of emotional states and physical states and spiritual states, because really the great mother embodies all and that great mother is within us and a lot of times we like to think of mothers as loving and caring and patient and calm and you know all of these kind of like warm and fuzzy feelings that we associate with our moms if you know you're a lucky one that has a good mom I am I love you mom um, but there's also another side of motherhood and it's shown in goddesses of so many different cultures where the mother becomes the source of destruction, the source of fierceness and the source of anger. And I was at first kind of confused by, you know, these two competing ideologies of, you know, the calm, loving mom versus this angry force of nature. But the truth of the matter is, is that that is what moms are. They are a combination of both. Um, you know, we love our children. And yet at the same time, if you hurt them, we're going to, we're going to do stuff. <laughs> we're going to get mad and we're going to defend them because that is part of motherhood. And it's not just part of motherhood in the traditional sense of somebody that has a child or has adopted a child or has a childlike figure in their life. This is in everybody because we know that we are not just the embodiment of one thing. We are the embodiment of all, of all things. And that is true for every single one of us whether you are female or male, whether you are a mother or not, whether you have a mother figure in your life or you don't, that doesn't even matter because the mother is in you. It is always within. So I kind of gave up on the Great Mother book by Eric Newman and <laughs> I did some searching online. And of course, as always, I found something really, really great um, by Ernest Holmes. And this was actually a, it's not a podcast, it's a recording put out by, I believe, the Science of Mind magazine. Anyway, you can find it on um, uh, SoundCloud. Sorry, you can find it on SoundCloud. You can listen to it for free. It's about a 30 minute long sermon that he gave years and years, like decades and decades and decades ago, um, called The Miracle of the Mother. And I highly recommend that you go and listen to it. But I'm actually going to read a part of it that I transcribed from that audio recording. So it says, how then, or how important then is parenthood? It is as though God had entrusted them to the greatest gifts of heaven to care for, to nurture, to love, to guide, 
until finally the infant passes into adulthood again and have the great drama of life reenacted, thus keeping alive the flow of the divine love which would nurture and care for all of us if only we let it. Let us, let us look into the process through which this divine givingness takes place. And in watching this miracle of life and love, we see one of the most beautiful illustrations of the way God works. When the seed of life is burst into fruitfulness into human experience, the very spirit of motherhood, the divine teacher and the divine counselor, inwardly prepares the expectant mother for the part that she is to play in the creative process. Her entire temperament is shifted in its balance as though an invisible hand touched it and reshaped her physical and emotional processes. There is born within her a desire and an interest and an expectation which grew in her mind and heart even as the physical body of the child is taking form. Things that she never thought of before came into her mind. She is equipped emotionally so that it will not be a hardship for her to carry out the duties of being a mother. She is being prepared to become a nurse, a teacher, a counselor, and a spiritual comfort. And at the same time, a biological change takes place. Her whole physical being is preparing itself for a divine event. The chemistry of the entire body changes so that the new life will be supplied with food, changes the shape of the body to provide a protective cradle for the unborn babe, and even adjusts the bone structure of the mother so that it may accommodate the birth. Even the muscles become adjusted, as does the entire nervous system, to make the experience a normal and natural and a happy event. And as we watch this procedure, we cannot help but recognize that the divine spirit knows how to take care of all of our needs, if we would let it. For in a certain sense, we are all mothers giving birth to new thoughts, new ideas, new events. And why should we doubt that the same creative process that prepares the mother to give birth to her baby will not also prepare us physically and mentally to give birth to new experiences. For in a certain definite sense, the mind of every man is both father and mother to the events and the circumstances and the conditions that take place in his life. In a very definite sense, the mind becomes impregnated with ideas. And in just as definite of sense, the impregnated mind nourishes those ideas into form. We cannot doubt that the same intelligence provides the ways and the methods and the means through which every birth takes place, whether it is a physical birth of a baby or a new invention. Everything comes from one source and through one creative process. Just as soon as the seed is hid in the ground, something stirs within it an instinct within it that reaches and towers, groping above for the light. It climbs to a soul in the grass and the flowers. And in just such a manner, our thoughts and hopes and ambitions hid in the soil of faith and expectancy will bear fruit after their own kind. One of the things that has touched me more deeply than usual is that there is witness to the fact that hope hidden faith can bear the fruit of achievement. So again, that is directly from one of his sermons. And gosh, that just really, really resonated with me because the mother creates, it creates new life. And yet we are all creating every single moment of every single day with our thoughts, with our intentions, with our actions. And as we go through the process of creating, whether it's consciously or not, our body is taking shape to support that. Our physical surroundings may take shape to support us. You know, when I um, found out that I was moving out of, out of Fresno, 
it was shocking at how quickly and easily things came together. And I have to believe that in the process of creating my new life, of giving birth to a new chapter in my story, that the world around me adjusted, as Ernest Holmes says, adjusted and expanded to accommodate that new life. And that doesn't just happen for me. It happens for every single one of us as we go through our daily process of living. And all we have to do is allow it to happen, is to embrace it, to allow the hips to adjust, to allow our bones to adjust, to allow our muscles to adjust. Because what happens is if we're trying to create something, but we don't allow any change, then that creation isn't going to come into fruition because we haven't made room for it. Because we have to make room for what it is that we want to birth into our stories, into our life. So how do we get into the mindset of that? How do we change our mindset from being stuck? And because being stuck is comfortable. Like it's really comfortable because you know it, you're familiar with it. You know, it's like having your favorite spot on the couch with your favorite pillows and your favorite blanket and your favorite jammies, watching your favorite show, eating your favorite ice cream. <laughs> you know, that is so comfortable and there's nothing wrong with that. But if that's a problem in your life, if you want to be more active, then you're going to have to get uncomfortable because change is uncomfortable. As much as people want to glorify the, uh, the birthing process, and as beautiful as Ernest Holmes described it, it hurts. <laughs> it is hurtful and painful and stressful beyond belief, beyond belief. And that is what birthing anything is like. I have friends that have started their own businesses and they go through those same emotions. And sometimes even the same physical restraints that of actual birth presents because it can be hard to break out of your old habits and your old shell, your old comfort zones. It can be physically difficult to do that sometimes. And a lot of times our bodies are so comfortable in what they've always known that they will actually react to that change and what we assume is a negative way, but we just have to keep moving past it because one of the things that motherhood teaches you is that you always have to keep going. You don't just stop. You can't just stop and give up and say, okay, no, nope, no more. You know, I mean, it, yes, that does happen. You know, let's, let's be real. That does happen. Hopefully very, very rarely. Um, but you just keep going. It doesn't matter how hard the day was doesn't matter how many times you cried or your child cried. <laughs> it doesn't matter how many tantrums are thrown. It doesn't matter how, what, you know, it doesn't matter what you fought over. It doesn't matter if they didn't eat their veggies. It doesn't matter if their outfit doesn't match and you want to go out and you want them to match. You know, all of those things. It doesn't matter. It feels like it matters in those moments. It definitely feels like it matters, but in the long run, you don't remember any of that. It doesn't affect anything unless you allow it to. So as you create and as you give birth to whatever it is that you are giving birth to, keep that in mind. And I feel like we're all giving birth right now because we've been stuck, right? We've been stuck. We've been pregnant <laughs> throughout this entire pandemic. <laughs> we have been pregnant with ourselves. We have been isolated. We have been socially distant. We have been physically distant from so many, which means that we have had more time with ourselves and with our immediate families than many of us have experienced in our entire life. And I hope that if you haven't already taken time during this pandemic to really go into introspection and to really question 
um, your thoughts, your ideas, your goals, then do that now. Because I do know that we are coming out of this, that life will return to some sense of what it formerly was. I don't want to say it's going to go back to normal because normal is always changing. There is no normal <laughs> and we have to embrace that because it's not just us that's giving birth. It is the entire world is giving birth to this new era of whatever you make it out to be. And think about as you go through your thoughts and your processes, what are you giving birth to? And how is it affecting you physically? How are your bones shifting? How are your muscles adjusting? How are your hormones changing? Because all of that can happen. And maybe not, you know, in the technical sense, your bones may not actually shift. But what if the bones are your physical surroundings? What if the muscles are the movement that happens around you every day? Things are shifting. We are in a time of change. And instead of being fearful of it, let's embrace it. And let's welcome it as we would welcome a baby into a new world. And I just really hope that we can all embrace these changes, these new births individually and as a community. You know, I've always said, and many more before me have always said, that you cannot live in fear and in faith. Those two things, they cannot exist at the same time. And for a very, very, very long time, we've been living in fear of the birth of what's to come. And right now, I just want all of us to take a breath and to remember what faith feels like. And faith is simply knowing that everything is going to work out in the end. And that is my wish for you on this Mother's Day to the great mother within us all. Thank you so much for listening. I love you all. Aho, ashe, amen. Call your mom if you can. If not, say a prayer. <laughs> Bye. Love you guys.